Our last example is going to give us again a couple different variables or a couple different numbers in this question. So we'll set up the formula slightly different. But what I want you to try to do is always just have a look at what you're given. Start with the conservation of energy formula then put in their individual formulas. This is a little bit harder in the fact that you're not just given the formula right off the bat. You have to build it. You have to build it based on what you're given. Not only that, you have to watch your units when you're dealing with these. So it says light with an unknown wavelength shines on a photoelectric cell with a threshold frequency. So now we have FO 4.27 times 10 to the 14 hertz. If the ejected photoelectrons have a stopping voltage, so now we've got V stop in this case, 0 0.941 volts, what we want to find is the incident wavelength of the light. So that's all we're given in this case. Now, just to kind of go back to what you were reading in the notes, the stopping voltage sometimes is a little bit weird to comprehend. When photoelectric effect is occurring, electrons are being emitted, 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 left, right, and center with various energies, various velocities, depending on the depth that they've been emitted from of the substance. How you set up a stopping voltage is to basically reverse the polarity of the cell so that you're causing the electrons no to not proceed to the other part or to the anode, I guess is the best way to describe it. So as they get emitted, you're having such a repulsive force due to the reversing of the cell that even the fastest moving electrons with the most energy could no longer go. And one thing I do want you to understand is notice this voltage is very small. In the notes I mentioned voltage being very small. Photoelectric cells, solar cells, even solar powered calculators do not have large voltages attached to them. If it was that case, we could very easily move to solar energy. But you have to have large number of cells, lots of high frequency or small wavelength light coming in in order to create huge amounts of voltage or huge amounts of energy out of here. You don't get large amounts of energy from solar power, which is why we still need to rely on the other sources. Even though solar power is super, we need to have some higher frequency wavelengths or sorry, some higher frequency radiation to make solar power that much better. You know, UV light from outside is pretty good, but if we could get higher frequency, we'd get higher energies. Okay. So again, start with the formula. EK max equals the energy of the incoming light minus W. Since we're given the energy of the electrons in terms of stopping a voltage, we will write this as QE V stop. The energy of the incoming light, we want wavelength. So we'll write as HC over lambda. And they don't give us the work function, but they give us threshold frequency. We will write this as, whoops, I can figure out where I can get my eraser from here. We'll go minus minus HFO. So there's the things we're given. We know the charge on an electron. That's off our data sheet. 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. We know V stop. We know H. We know C. We know H, we know threshold frequency. The only thing unknown here is lambda. Now this one's a little trickier because we're solving for something on the bottom. That's why I chose this example, basically to help you with the manipulation. I'm going to move the work function or HFO to the other side. So it becomes QE V stop plus HFO 
equal to hc over lambda. Again, to solve for lambda, we have to clear the fraction. So we're going to multiply both sides by lambda. So it becomes a pretty messy little step here. But I multiplied that whole term on the other side by lambda to equal hc. And to solve for lambda, we're going to divide by that whole thing. So it's going to be Planck's constant times speed of light divided by this great big term, QE V stop plus HFO. And here's the common mistake students make. Well, there's two common mistakes made with this algebra. First one, again, is to for, they forget to multiply both terms. So you forget to bracket the two terms and multiply by lambda. The second thing students want to do is divide H out of top and bottom. Remember, there are two terms in the denominator. H is not common to both of those terms. So you cannot divide H out of this equation. It's not common to every single term. If it was, go for it. But since it's not, you have to leave it in this form. So I'm going to go to another slide, write this formula out, and then we'll do the substitution. Wavelength equals HC over QE V stop plus HFO. I'm even going to bracket it so I remember to bracket it when I put it on my calculator. So wavelength equals 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by the charge of an electron 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times the stopping voltage I'll have to go back and get that number 0 0.941 volts plus 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times the threshold frequency again I need to go back 4.27 times 10 to the 14 lots of numbers probably the most or the biggest formula you deal with in this course but not necessarily the hardest to manipulate but it is one of the formulas that involve the most variables. So again, when you punch this in, punch in the top, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 434, 3 to the exponent 8, hit enter, divide by, bracket that whole denominator, 1.6 to the exponent negative 19 times 0 0.941 plus 6.63 to the exponent negative 34 times 4.27 to the exponent 14. Close the bracket. Make sure you bracket the entire denominator. The calculator knows order of operations to do the multiplication, then the addition, but you do have to bracket the entire denominator. What you should get as an answer here, 4.59 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So it's in the visible region, just barely in the visible region for this type. Photoelectric effect, most of the metals that we tend to use in photoelectric effect work either in visible or ultraviolet. Uh, but they don't give you a lot of voltage. If we could shine x-rays at them, we'd get even more energy at them. If we could bombard them with gamma rays, we'd get even more energy. Photoelectric effect would, by the way, just for 
interest sakes would occur a lot better um, in space because there's more cosmic radiation that the Earth's magnetic field deflects that wouldn't get deflected if we were to put all our solar cells in space, which is one of the reasons why we can hypothesize to have solar-powered ships that will run off starlight from star to star so they don't need natural fuels. They'll be able to use, you know, there's this thinking of a solar wind kind of thing to drop power your ship, and it definitely could work way down the line. We don't have that technology any time in the future. So that's photoelectric effect. My biggest piece of advice with the calculations, start with the conservation of energy formula, put in the individual formulas, manipulate what you're looking for, and then solve for your answer. Graphically, this is something that's done quite often on diploma exams. Make sure you practice a few of the graphical ex examples. Um, photoelectric effect tends to be one of the things that they really do spend a lot of time on written response on diplomas. And you'll see a photoelectric effect written response type question on my unit exam as well. Whether it's graphing or a fairly complicated formula manipulation substitution, you'll have to wait and see. But photoelectric effect is one of the most important topics in this course.